Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture video, we will diagram the evolutionary modifications that occurred in transferring the function of the jaw joint into the bones of the middle ear used in hearing in modern mammals. In early synapsid reptiles and other tetrapods, the middle ear cavity, which is an air-filled cavity between the tympanic membrane, or the eardrum, and the inner fluid-filled ear cavity. The inner ear cavity is actually separated into the bony labyrinth, which controls balance, and the membranous labyrinth, which controls hearing. Sound moves as waves in the air, and they strike the tympanic membrane and transports that wave down the rigid stapes bone to contact the fluid-filled membranous labyrinth which produces a wave among the fluid, which is detected by the central nervous system. In mammals, rather than having just one bone, the stapes, they have three bones, which are employed in the transmission of sound. This helps to increase the spectrum of sound waves that can be detected by the ear. This transformation is played out as one of the best examples of evolution. In cynodonts, the jaw articulation is between the quadrate and articular bones. The quadrate bone will go on to evolve into the incus bone, while the articular bone will go on to evolve into the malus bone. In the first mammal, Morganucodon, we see how this transformation occurred. The tympanic membrane is supported by the bones in the lower jaw, with contributions from the ectotympanic, formed from the surangular bone, the malus bone, formed from the articular bone, and the incus, formed by the quadrate bone from the skull. These bones sit at the jaw joint, with sound conducted through just the stapes. Now what happens at this stage is that the jaw joint shifts from between the quadrate and articular to between the squamosal and denary, which means that the tympanic membrane does not have to be attached to the lower jaw anymore and can migrate up to the side of the head where it's found in modern mammals. Now, once the ectotympanic malus incus, along with the stapes, is free from its attachment to the jaw, it can develop alone in the side of the head, and the malus, incus, and stapes can form a chain of three ear bones with joints between them. This evolution played out with evidence discovered in the fossil record, but it can also be observed in the embryology of the middle ear bones in modern mammals. During early development, the ear bones form next to the lower jaw, but as the animal develops in the womb, its ear bones move away from the jaw to be integrated within the skull. It's rather interesting that this transformation is played out with subtle changes over the course of the late Triassic and early Jurassic. The first species to achieve a mammal jaw joint between the scamosal and dentary bones is often considered the first true mammal. Hence, most paleontologists regard Morganucodon as the first true mammal, although a number of Jurassic mammals are on the edge of this strict definition, with some exhibiting a dual articulation involving multiple bones. In the next video, we'll look at the adaptations the cynodonts demonstrate in the origin of advanced chewing muscles and the reconstruction of the skull to allow for stronger bites in these early proto-mammals. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the Utah State University Geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin slash Links are found in the description below.